So I see people make their way into the room. I want to thank you for joining us for this virtual college fair for North Hunterton High School. Have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started with the presentations in this session. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So get as comfortable as you like and just listen to all the great information that's going to be presented here over the next 45 minutes or so. This is one of many different sessions. Check out all of the different sessions if you haven't already at uh, the North Hunterton High School website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same place that you signed up for this session and the others. So you can find it through your high school website. This is the order in which we'll be hearing our presentations tonight. We're in session C1. If I get the menu out of the way here, I will, you'll see the full list. So again, if you have questions throughout the presentations, please make sure to use the Q&A button. We'll get started now with our first institution to present. It'll be West Virginia University, Morgantown. Jacqueline, you're, you're, you're still muted. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Jackie Gress. I am an associate director in the Office of Admissions at West Virginia University in Morgantown. Um, WVU is a statewide institution. We have three campuses. So the, our campus that I represent is in Morgantown, West Virginia. We have two other campuses in Kaiser and Beckley. Central to our system are definitely our comprehensive majors, career services, we do have dual enrollment, uh, dual enrollment high school programs. So if you're interested in that, please connect with me after this. Uh, we have competitive tuition and scholarships that are portable, which that means they will move in between our campuses at a prorated rate. Um, we have 500 clubs and organizations and definitely a dedication to diversity and inclusiveness. It is an easy switch to move in between campuses and you will find your fit and I'll kind of explain how. So, WVU is um, located in, we are a large grant, land grant institution and we're located in North Central West Virginia. We're about an hour and a half uh, south of Pittsburgh. Um, our students, 21,000 students, we have 28,000 altogether, uh, but we have about 50% from out of state. We are your home away from home with 12 residence halls and we have 25 places to eat or to grab food. We do have some quick service areas. Um, we have 140 majors to choose from, and in each field, our um, professors are and our students are conducting research, and they are recognized each year globally and nationally for that research. So what are your outcomes? Uh, first of all, we have career centers across campus. We have career advisors and our alumni, and they connect our students and graduates with hundreds of employers every year. We have a program called Handshake to assist with that. And we have career fairs every year uh, for our seniors. We also have things like mock interviews and um, alumni shadowing programs. So it's pretty fantastic. And of course, with all of that, we do have fun. Um, we have the PRT program. I'll talk about the PRT in a minute. Um, our Mountaineer mascot, pepperoni rolls. So if you visit, make sure you eat one. We have uh, Country Rose is our theme song. Fall Fest, which is a big concert. It's really fun. And we participate in the Division I uh, Big 12 NCAA conference. So this is a picture of our downtown area of campus. And it is a really beautiful uh, campus with very historic buildings. Um, so it's exactly what you'd, what you'd want to experience like at a small, smaller liberal arts college. That's what our, our campus looks like on the downtown side. Um, we do have another part of campus, which, um, we take the personal rapid transit system to. It is a monorail. And this is no bigger than you'd expect a, a Division I campus to be. Um, but to get up to the other part of campus, which looks like this, more modern, um, we do take the monorail. And there's five stops on the monorail. It's very safe. Our students love using it. Um, as you can see, this is a more modern part of campus. So you do get the best of both worlds. Uh, we have a hospital up here. We do have our ag school, our, our engineering school. 
and uh, students take classes on both sides of campus. It's really um, an interesting place to live and be, and you can live on either side of campus. This is the river that we're kind of nestled upon. You can see our rowers in the bottom of the screen, and um, this is what it looks like in fall. So it's a really beautiful place to be. Uh, student life. So let's talk a little bit about our 400 student organizations. We have outdoor adventure clubs, which are really, really popular. Um, intramural sports, we have a gaming club, we have academic clubs, so things related to your major. Uh, we also have performing arts clubs, um, equity and inclusion clubs, our club sports are huge. Um, Mountaineer Parents Club for all the parents, if any parents are here, you can jump on there now and uh, be a part of that club prior to even applying or attending, they'll, they'll welcome you. Uh, we have health and wellness clubs and a state-of-the-art rec center and an equine facility, uh, plus um, about 300 and 90 more. Um, so when we think about WVU, we definitely think about pathways because we have 140 majors to take you down a path that you are really interested in. So we have on the left hand side here our general pathways. So agriculture, business, education, exploratory is undecided, uh, law and public policy. And on the right, I picked out some select majors that um, are kind of our niche program. So neuroscience, biochemistry as a food science program. We do have a six year law track um, and we have sport and adventure media. So a lot of students say, I really love sports. What can I do with that in college? I have a ton of majors for you. Um, we have forensics. We have um, four crime scene investigation campus, four crime scene investigation houses on our campus, um, immunology and medical microbiology studies infectious disease and pair that with public health that I have at the bottom here. You can be very, very specialized. So we are a health sciences, STEM, um, education, all sorts of different uh, type of campus. So research, we are a, an R1 research institution. So we are in the most elite category of research schools, which means that we have a lot of research facilities on our campus. So our core arboretum, uh, we have a light, we have lifelike patient simulator. So when you are doing your um, your undergraduate experience, that first year in nursing, for example, you're going to work with these patients that are robots. We have 13 farms across WV, or across West Virginia, and we do have a, re, a forest research center right next to campus. We have a robotics team, we have an observatory, we have five theaters, four shops, three labs, and one dance studio in our performing arts school. So there is a ton to do, and everybody's doing research. It's not just the STEM fields, like most. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about application and scholarships. Um, we are a rolling admissions process. Uh, there is no deadline to submit your application. So technically the deadline is August of next summer. And um, the nice thing about applying rolling is that we're tr since we're true rolling, you can submit um, more information as the year goes on. So I'll talk about that in a second. But um, we do encourage that you apply early in your senior year. To apply, you must complete the common application or the WVU application online. And so that's your first step. And the next step is usually we require test scores. However, this year we are test optional. And some majors do have specific requirements for testing. So if you apply to WVU and you don't meet that requirement or you apply test optional, then we can place you in a different track and we will have a larger discussion about that. Uh, we also require transcripts or self-reported coursework and your grades. Um, WVU does permit students to submit test scores and GPA improvements throughout their senior year. So whatever you submit now, if you um, build upon that score or that GPA, let me know and I will help you learn whether or not that changes your admissions status or if it would change your scholarship. So we will reevaluate throughout the year. We are really trying to do what benefits the students this year. Um, we do offer automatic scholarships for both test optional and score sender applicants. We do have scores for students who send scores. Those automatic scholarships are posted online. Um, right now, you can go visit our scholarships website. The others are not posted yet. We're gonna get there, so. Um, we do have open houses, go for a Friday, ask us anything, and we have a lot of ways to connect. So if you are interested in connecting, revisit this, um, this um, presentation and you can log in here to, uh, or you can log into the sites to join me. Bottom line is get in touch with me if you have questions. I'm here to help. That's my job.
Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Jackie. I'm gonna leave her screen up for a second so the attendees can see it. I will also use what Jackie mentioned about coming back and accessing this presentation later. You can do that through your high school website. Um, in about a week, the recording of this entire presentation, in fact, all of the presentations have been recorded and will be available um, again within about a week. Here's the schedule for the rest of the evening. In the bottom left corner, we're in session C1 which means up next now will be the representative from Manhattan College. Hi everyone. Can you see my screen? You're all set, yep. Perfect, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Jacqueline Santiago. I am one of the Assistant Directors of Admissions here at Manhattan College. I'm also joined by my colleague Evelyn who is on here for any students that may have any questions. She'll be in that chat box to assist you with any questions that you may have. Our location. So one of the first things that many students will notice when they come to our campus is that in fact we are actually not located in Manhattan. Manhattan College is located in Riverdale which is a quiet neighborhood in the North Bronx. We were founded in 1853 as a LaSallian Liberal Arts College and our original campus then was in Manhattan, hence where we have uh, received our name. But it wasn't until the 1920s in order to expand our campus, we up and uh, moved to Riverdale, which now we sit on 22 acres of land. We are a smaller to medium liberal arts college with around about 3,600 undergraduate students within our five main schools of study. Oop. Sorry about that. Uh, one of the things that makes Manhattan College great is our New York City location. You'll hear from a lot of our students, but it's really the best of both worlds just because of where we are located right outside of Manhattan and uh, right uh, with Westchester County in your back door. You'll hear a lot from students, um, again, that this is the best of both worlds because of our ease to access to one of the greatest cities in the world, which is New York City, and all the opportunities available with the small campus community and a comfortable campus to call home. The ease of access is mainly due to our location on the one line. So our one line subway, for anyone that's not familiar with the subway system, the one line runs from the very bottom of Manhattan in the financial district all the way up to us. So it is very hard to get lost on our one line because um, we are either the first or last stop depending on which way you are coming from. Uh, the one line, which also what's really nice is that it's actually located right by our campus. I would say it's about a five minute walk. You exit the campus, walk right around the corner and you can hop right onto that train. For any student that maybe is not interested in um, taking the subway system, we do have the New York City bus system. We're actually super close um, to Yankee Stadium for anyone that wants to partake in tickets on campus. We're a short bus ride from Arthur Avenue, which if you haven't been, it's the Bronx's Little Italy, amazing food, amazing bakeries. You've got uh, New York City Botanical Gardens and the Bronx Zoo all within your um, back door. Here at Manhattan College, um, we pride ourselves on having a diverse and inclusive community. We currently have over 40 states and 63 countries that are represented on campus with a lot of great ways to get involved. You'll see here again, our undergraduate enrollment is actually about 3,600 students. We're almost at that 50-50 mark in terms of male to female population. Um, and something else that's really nice is that more than 30% of our students do identify as minorities. An additional 32% of our students are actually the first in their families to attend college. When it comes to student life and everything that Manhattan College has to offer, one of the most popular offices on our campus is our multicultural center. This is located right in our student center, Kelly Commons, which I would say is about 10 feet across the street off of campus. Uh, the Multicultural Center puts on a wide array of programming throughout the entire year. This ranges from Heritage Month celebrations, guest speakers, Friday fun days, discussion groups, um, and also a fun fact, if you want to try food from different places, the Multicultural Center is definitely your spot to go and grab um, something really delicious to eat. Some of the other great opportunities to get involved on campus are social action groups. So social action and community service are a large part of Manhattan College and a large part of our mission. Um, they will, there's a lot of different ways to get involved, whether it's locally, if it is um, something that is traveling out of state, obviously due to the current times, that all depends on where you can travel and what you can do. But our two main groups on campus are called Love and Loco. Love is our LaSallian Outreach Volunteer Experience and Loco is our LaSallian Outreach Collaborative. 
Both of these are community service organizations. Um, again, you don't have to be of a LaSallean Catholic background. You don't have to be of any specific background, any nationality, any race. You can be any person on our campus and you are welcome to join any one of these social action groups. They're really community service. Again, we pride ourselves on being such a diverse campus that you do not have to affiliate as a LaSallean student to attend any of these service-based organizations. Um, we have over 100 clubs that you can get involved in. Um, so there's really anything from student government um, all the way to a video game uh, club. So there's a lot of fun ways to get involved. We're actually also a D1 school. So we've got 19 men and women's NCAA Division I teams. However, if maybe you want to play at um, a sport, but maybe not at the D1 level, intramurals and recreation will definitely be your next spot for you to be able to play a sport that you're passionate about, but maybe just not at the competitive level. Uh, there's also gaming like Super Smash Brothers, Rocket League. We have Cornhole this uh, year as well. So a lot of fun ways to get involved on our campus. When it comes to academic program opportunities at Manhattan, hopefully there's a major within any of our five schools that do interest you. So we have over 100 majors and minors within our five schools of study. We have our O'Malley School of Business, our School of Education and Health, Engineering, Liberal Arts, and our School of Science. Anything with that asterisk next to it really just means that we um, offer a bachelor's master degree option. So it is a seamless track. Um, you can apply into the School of Business if maybe you're interested in an MBA, you do have that opportunity. Anything at the bottom um, is a pre-professional program. You can't major in a pre-professional program. However, you can add on that additional coursework um, to go ahead and further your studies. You could be any one of those majors in order. Um, you don't have to be a School of Science student to go into pre-vet or pre-med. You can be any uh, major and be able to go into those pre-professional programs. As far as our residence halls, for any student that is interested in living on campus, we offer suite style and traditional style housing. Any student can apply for the suite style or traditional style. You do not have to be a freshman student um, and think you're living just in the traditional style. You do have the opportunity to enter suite style living. Um, we do have links on our website uh, that I'd be more than happy to share with you uh, with virtual tours of our residence halls, as well as we are opening up our campus to allow for guests to come and check out um, the campus as well. Return on investment, which is just a fancy word for bang for your buck. These are some of our important highlights you want to pay attention to on your college search. 90% of our alumni are employed or in graduate school within nine months, and 87% of students are actually working in their desired field. So something you just want to pay attention to, um, rankings, uh, getting a job, going into graduate school upon completing your degree. Now how to apply. So um, we did go SAT, ACT optional for the fall 20. 2021 um, school year. So you do not have to submit those SAT or ACT scores. We understand this is an, a very um, untraditional time. So there are, uh, we did waive those scores for you. Uh, we require the, your application. So you can apply Manhattan College, Coalition, or the Common App. We do require a letter of recommendation, your transcript, and your personal essay. We don't require an additional personal essay. You can um, submit the essay should you choose to apply Coalition, Manhattan, or Common App. You will use that essay. Your transcript, obviously, in order to make an admissions decision, we need that on file. Letter of recommendation, we require one, but you can send up to three letters of recommendation, and we do review your application holistically. Jacqueline, we're about a minute over. Sorry to jump no, in. No, totally here. fine. Yeah, Any questions, sorry. please feel free to um, ask away, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much, and Jacqueline said, please, if you have any questions, use the Q&A button on your screen and any of the uh, representatives will be able to answer. If you have a, a question for a specific rep or a specific institution, please include their name or the school's name in the question so we know that. Next up now, York College of Pennsylvania. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Derek Butler. I am the admissions counselor that works with all students from New Jersey for York College. Um, tonight, I just wanna give you a quick overview of York College to help you as you're going through your college search process. If you're not familiar with York, we are located in South Central Pennsylvania. We are located about an hour north of Baltimore, two hours west of Philadelphia, and about three hours from New York City. We're a little over two hours from North Hundred High School, just to put it into perspective for you. Now, our campus itself is a mid-sized campus. We have about 4,100 full-time undergraduate students on our campus. 
we offer over 60 different majors as well as over 60 different minors. So it is very, very easy to find a program that works well for you. Um, our most popular programs right now are nursing, any of our five engineering majors, any of the 26 majors we have under our Graham School of Business, as well as education and criminal justice. We try to provide a very flexible academic environment. So if you want a double major, if you want to pick up multiple minors, you can easily do that. If you decide to change your major part of the way through your time at York, you can easily do that as well. The other part of our population on our campus is our full-time faculty. All of our classes are taught either by full-time professors or by adjunct professors that are professionals in the field. So that way you're always learning directly from a professional. Um, we do try to keep it very personal in terms of class size as well. So classes range anywhere from about 10 to 35 students with an average right around 19 right now. We don't offer any traditional lecture hall style classes either just to make sure that you have easy access to your professors and you really get to know them as well as your peers as you're going through your education at York. Now, York is also a residential school, so we do guarantee you on-campus housing all four years that you're on our campus. So your first year, you're gonna live in a traditional style dorm. Uh, all of those buildings are co-ed by four. They all are single or double rooms. But after your first year, you have plenty of options available to you, whether it's a suite style building, whether it's a full-size apartment with a kitchen if you wanna go off a meal plan, maybe even a full-size house if you and a group of friends wanna to get together and have a little bit more independence. The nice thing is we don't ever ask students to go off campus to find housing. So all of these options are wrapped very nicely under the York College Residence Life umbrella. Now being a residential school, we get a lot of questions about cars on campus as well. And I'm happy to say you are allowed to have a car all four years. You just have to register it with campus safety and you're more than welcome to use it, especially as an out-of-state student, it's very helpful. Now, switching gears a little bit, York is a campus where it is very hard not to get involved in something. Um, we host plenty of events on campus. There's well over 100 every semester. Now, we're not a suitcase campus or anything like that. Not everyone leaves on a Friday afternoon, so there's always something going on. We have everything from smaller events like an open mic night or a Pinterest party, all the way up through our big spring concert we host every year, regional bus trips, dive-in movies at the swimming pool. There's a little something different every day and something to suit everyone's interests. In terms of clubs and organizations, we do have well over 100 as well. Anything from our Student Senate and Campus Activities Board to religious organizations, to academic honor societies, to um, club and intramural sports, to community service groups, you name it, there's probably a club that aligns well with what you're looking to do in your college career or something that you liked doing in high school that you wanna carry on with. In terms of varsity athletics, we are an NCAA Division III school. We have 23 teams. My advice to you is if you are interested in going through the recruitment process, connect with me at some point, and I'm happy to work with you to get you connected to the coaching staff and start that process for you. Now, just to go a little bit over the kind of cost of attendance of York. So we are a private institution in and out of state tuition is exactly the same for our students. Um, right now, the total cost of attendance, tuition fees, room board, everything included is about $33,500 a year before any scholarships or financial aid. All students at York do receive a merit scholarship that ranges from one to $10,000 at the time they are accepted. And we do offer some other scholarships as well that are part of a separate competitive application process. Those normally open in December of your senior year. On the other side of things, we do also offer need-based financial aid. So we do ask all families to submit the FAFSA if they wish. Um, about 99% of new students do receive financial aid, whether that is federal, state, or institutional-based need need-based aid, um, we're happy to help you through that. Again, financial aid is one of the more critical parts of the process for a lot of families. So if you ever have questions about it, don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to walk you through that process as well. And then finally, I just wanna talk a little bit about the application process at York. We do offer two different application paths. We have our in-house York College Spartan application online, as well as the common application. Both are absolutely free to apply. Our regular decision process that most students utilize is a rolling admissions process as well. So as we make decisions, we send them out. We don't have any hard deadlines. We do try to encourage students to make a decision by May 1st of their senior year. But if you need more time past that, we'll absolutely work with you. Um, we also then do offer early decision as a second option for students that know York is their top choice. That is a traditional binding early decision. So we encourage you, if you have questions, reach out, have a conversation with me about that. But the deadline for that is November 1st within a commitment deadline of December 15th, the very traditional path. 
Now this year, like many schools, York has decided to go test optional. So in addition to your application, we are going to be looking for an official copy of your high school transcript, two letters of recommendation, as well as then an essay, a writing sample, a personal statement. Um, if you are applying with a common application, the essay involved with that is absolutely fine. Um, you don't need to spend anything additional. Your college will provide you prompts if you apply with our application. Test scores are still acceptable. If you do have them, you can submit them, and we are happy to accept them at a later point to reconsider scholarships and things like that, but they are not mandatory. If we do ever have any questions, we'll certainly reach out to you to ask them or request an interview if we need more um, information from you. If you do have any questions after this evening, like I said, I am the admissions counselor that works with all students from New Jersey. So my contact information is here. So you're welcome to reference it. You're also welcome to visit our website and find that a little bit more directly as well. I look forward to speaking with you all soon. Thank you. Derek, thank you very much. Next up in our session, the representative from Montclair State University. Hi everyone, can you see my screen? Yep. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, Vanessa Deverks, uh, Lead Admissions Counsel from Montclair State University here to talk to you today a little bit more about our school. Um, so just to give you an idea about Montclair State by the numbers, we were established in 1908. Um, we we're actually the second largest school in New Jersey um, with 21,000 students on campus and we do have 17,000 undergraduate students. Um, even though we are a, the second largest in New Jersey, we're actually a medium-sized institution nationally. Um, so we are gonna have smaller classroom sizes. So average class is gonna be around 23 to 25 students, but the student faculty ratio is 17 to one. So not too many lecture halls. In fact, we usually use our lecture halls for our tours when they are in person. Um, large amount of offerings for academics, 300 academic programs, as majors, minors, concentrations, including combined degrees. Um, so this is great for you to explore, um, as well as the students coming in or incoming class is about 3,100 students for each freshman class. And you're typically going to see a B plus 3.2 average of what we're looking for in a student. Um, and out of our 17,000 um, undergraduate students, we do see approximately 5,300, sometimes 6,000 students that live on campus. And our campus is um, sprawling over 252 acres, suburban, overlooking New York City. So if you've ever been there, um, it is enclosed overlooking, again, on top of a hill, Route 46, Route 3 nearby. So suburban area, New York City, right next to us with two trains and a bus station there. Um, what's really great is that our students are involved, whether you are commuting or if you're living on campus. I know North Huntington is a little bit further away, so you might choose to live in one of our 10 different residence halls here on campus. I'm um, still being involved in over 120 clubs and organizations or 18 um, Division III sports at Montclair State. Um, your first month of school, you're actually gonna have Red Hawk Frenzy where it's gonna be um, almost like a bombardment of fun activities, um, organizational affairs. So this way you actually get to know more about what's going on. In addition to receiving emails, um, based on the clubs and organizations, it'll give you a calendar of what is going on um, during each single day and weekend at Montclair State. Um, so it is something where our students are involved and our student leaders on campus. Um, so just to give you an idea of some new buildings um, at Montclair State, um, we're always upgrading our facilities, especially if we have new programs or very, um, I would say, exponentially growing um, programs in certain industries. Being so close to New York City, we definitely highlight our School of Business, Communications, and Life Sciences. So for School of Communication and Media, um, I would say the biggest advantage is that we're very technologically advanced. This is due to um, a Sony Electronics partnership. So our facilities are extremely hands-on. If you're looking at broadcasting, journalism, um, TV, digital media, filmmaking, this is definitely a school for you where you're gonna see all the facilities that you have at your fingertips starting your freshman year. Um, Feliciano School of Business, you're gonna be able to choose a concentration. You wanna go for business such as finance, um, entrepreneurship, marketing, management, we have about 10. Um, and you'll be able to um, really have an entrepreneurial and innovative spirit here. So we have an $80,000 pitch competition, simulating stock exchange, 3D printing labs. So we really do encourage ideas for new students here. And of course, if you're in environmental life science or research, it's something that's for you. Even as freshmen, you'll be able to involve your faculty, all of our um, programs, of eligibility for research opportunities, especially for those that are going into science and mathematics here. 
And just to highlight just a couple of new things, College Hall, which was our only building on campus in 1908, is actually going to be, it has just finished our renovation, so now it's a one-stop student center. You'll see me there um, in undergraduate admissions as well as financial aid, so that way students are going to be in one house for when you come onto campus. Um, but two growing new programs, so for those interested in computer science, cybersecurity, this is a new building specifically built for you, um, and it's something that's exponentially growing. We have a combined degree program in this. Um, so it's going to have more instructional space for you and specialized research opportunities. In School of Nursing, it is a brand new program. This will be the fourth year in first graduating um, class of the BSNs. So you are going to see those high fidelity mannequins and it is our most competitive academic program. So these are our total academic programs here, 300 different programs. I didn't list all of them, of course, but you'll see on the left hand side, the most popular majors at Montclair State. Um, on the um, right hand side, you're going to see that we have um, in combination of 39 different combined degrees, which means you could get your bachelor's and master's in five years, save you time and money. We also have a four plus one MBA programs with a lot of, um, you'll see general humanities. So that means while in school at Montclair State around your junior year, current student, you'll be able to apply for an MBA. Um, so this way you could get more competitive edge in a humanities course by pairing that with a master's in business administration. And for those who are not sure what they wanna do yet, we actually have something called the Undeclared Discovery Program. So this means that if you have an interest, but you're not sure what field you wanna go into. Um, so I like helping people, but I don't know if I wanna teach yet. I could choose education, service, and society as an undeclared pre-major student. You'll have a separate advisor, your own home in our college hall, and you get to go to different networking, career explorations. Um, you have your advisor that'll help you out narrow down your field. And very most importantly, you'll be able to experience coursework in these areas that still count for graduation. So by the time you kind of get to experience this, you'll go, ah, you know what, teaching is not for me. I don't wanna do that, but I do know what I want to do. So this is very exciting for us, especially as a lot of students, about one third of our class does come in as undeclared or pre-majors. And um, going into the application, we're very proud to announce that Montclair State is now on Common App. Um, so before you could only apply through our website, now you could also apply as a common app. Um, so if you're going to apply on a common app, it's the same instructions. Um, you'll just still need to submit your application and personal essay through the application, whether at Montclair or common app. Um, always have your guidance counselor send your official high school transcripts and letter of recommendation. Um, pay your $65 application fee. And Montclair State has always been a test optional school for five years now. So it is something you decide if you want to or not submit, it can never hurt you sending in your SAT scores and it doesn't count against you if you don't. Um, but very importantly, when you do submit your application and have your materials complete, just know if you're in the College of the Arts or Art and Design, you are required to do either a um, portfolio review, an audition, and for those in the communications, you have a specialized essay prompt. All of this will be um, seen on your application when you apply, so you cannot miss it. All right, so just very quickly, some deadlines here. We have a priority deadline, non-binding. So if Montclair State is your first choice, if you just want to apply and get out of the way, December 1st, you will receive a decision by December 23rd. All of our decisions are online through your portal. Um, very important if you're applying for nursing, you have to be complete by January 15th. It is a limited seat program. And for scholarship applicants for New Jersey students, you'd want to apply by either the priority or January 15th as we're going to look at your availability, um, I'm sorry, your eligibility, um, 3.5 GPA, um, high amounts of rigor in your junior and senior year at the time of your decision by January 15th. But we do go all the way up to March 1st for our decisions. And for in-state tuition fees, if you are commuting around 13, if you're going to be rooming and boarding, you're going to almost double that depending on which of the 10 residence halls you choose from. So just under $30,000. And of course, you always want to submit your FAFSA um, when you apply to any college. Um, so that way you could be able to see what you're eligible for in need-based aid. Um, and we do have around 71% of our students do receive some type of financial aid from Montclair State. And then just very quickly, of course, if you want to experience any of our virtual offerings, we do have our open house coming up this October and November, as well as special topic information sessions. You also could do a telecounseling appointment with me um, or Dina Rezik, who's actually your admissions counselor. Um, and we have interactive campus map tours, and we also have webinars with our academic advisors. So if you have a specific interest, you could go to our website um, and see one of our pre-recorded sessions or one of our new sessions. We have them every single day um, and specialized topics throughout the month. 
If you have any Sorry, questions, Vanessa, you can always contact me. Um, I'm going to have to jump in because oh, we're yep, that's it. I'm done. over time. So, yeah, uh, we have the contact information there, but also uh, with this being recorded, uh, people will be able to come back in and, and get that information and be able to follow up. Appreciate that. Next up, the representative from Fairleigh Dickinson University. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dennis Green. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Um, uh, today I'm going to go over our New Jersey campuses in particular and kind of give you an overview of everything we have to offer. Um, so you can see on your screen right now some of the stats. Um, New uh, our two campuses in New Jersey are located in Teaneck and then over in Madison, New Jersey. Um, just to give you an understanding, our two campuses are kind of unique in different ways. Our Teaneck, New Jersey campus is going to be a D1 campus, more of a modern urban campus overall. And then our Madison campus is going to be more of that suburban um, residential campus, which is about 45 minutes outside of New York City. Um, so keep that in mind. We'll talk a little bit more about the two campuses in detail as we continue. Um, I am really excited about our two international campuses as well. So we have our Roxton College over in England. Um, it's about an hour northwest of London. So we have a lot of traditional um, undergraduate students that will go there for a semester or two um, to have a study abroad experience. And then we have our Vancouver campus, um, and that's going to be on the West Coast in Canada. It's a full running campus. They specialize in business, hotel, um, and restaurant management as well as computer science. But still at the same time, our New Jersey students are able to go over to um, the Vancouver campus to have a study abroad experience there. Uh, beyond our two campuses, study abroad is a big portion of your time here. So we encourage you whether to go to those campuses or to go to one of our partnership universities, whether it's uh, Asia, Europe, South America, we want you to be able to have that study abroad opportunity. Um, and so that'll be available to you throughout your time, regardless of what your major or program might be. Um, you'll also see on the screen our student to faculty ratio is 12 to 1. Um, what that ultimately means is while FDU is considered the largest private university in the state of New Jersey, we pride ourselves on providing that small class average that you might see at smaller schools overall. So our average class size is anywhere from 16 to 18 students. Um, biggest class you could have at FDU is around 35. That's where we try to top it off. Um, overall, all of your courses are going to be taught by professors. We don't have any teaching assistants or graduate assistants actually teaching courses. So you get the professor from day one, which is a big asset for a university of our size. So definitely consider that in the process. Um, you'll also see that we have lots of clubs and organizations that are available. Um, so whether you're interested in an academic club or um, Greek life or sports, anything like that's going to be available for you. And a lot of these clubs have to do with student interests. So really depending on what you're interested in at the time, it could be a possibility for you to get involved in. Um, and then we have lots of different students from all over the world, all throughout the um, nation at FDU. So with that being said, we do consider ourselves to be a global university. Our overall mission at FDU is for you to be able to um, get outside of the college bubble, get outside of our campuses and work with different cultures and populations, get involved in the community, whether that's an internship in New York City or whether it's a field experience or whether it's going to Costa Rica for community service. We want you to have that hands-on approach. That way, when you go into the workforce, you have that experience of working with different people under your belt. Um, so I am going to go to the next slide here and you're going to see um, some of the differences between our two campuses. Now, the Metro campus, like I said, is a Division I school. Um, for those of you who are watching March Madness a couple years ago, our men's basketball team actually went into March Madness, so that was very exciting. Um, so they've been doing extremely well. Um, some other really unique sports that you might see at D1 at Metro are fencing, um, as well as bowling. Um, but a lot of the traditional sports will be available there. Great thing about D1 sports is sports scholarships. So if that's something that you're interested in, you would, all, um, you would absolutely get in touch with the coach over there. Um, you can see that it's going to be a larger campus, about 3,000 students overall, larger graduate population. Um, and then when compared to Florham, 
our metropolitan campus has a slightly larger commuter population. Um, so anywhere between 45 to 50% of students will be uh, commuting throughout their four years at Metro. And then, like I said, lots of clubs and organizations get involved in. Um, being so close to New York City, students are going in and out of New York. Um, we're actually about 10 minutes from Manhattan itself. The GW Bridge, George Washington Bridge is right around the corner from us. So you'll have that available. Um, our Florham campus is going to be that traditional residential college experience that students might be looking for. Uh, we have a train station less than a 10 minute walk that will take you straight into Penn Station in New York. So you can easily get into the city um, from Florham. Um, Florham has downtown Madison. I say downtown, but it's more of that small town environment. So you have a lot of different shops and restaurants there. Um, so I always say that Florham's the best of both worlds. But the Florham campus is a former Vanderbilt estate, so you have that historic flair there overall, which is really unique. Um, and then you can see about 500 or so less than um, the Metro campus student population wise for undergrad. Um, smaller graduate population, but very residential. Anywhere between 70 to 75% of students are gonna be living on campus for all four years. And then again, lots of clubs and organizations. Um, our Florham campus is D3, so keep that in mind. Um, so if you are interested in D3 sports, whether it's football, swimming in particular, that's gonna be available over at our um, Florham campus. This is a picture of our Metro campus, just so you can get a feel. It's on the river, on the um, Hackensack River, more modern buildings, more closer to the city. And then this is our Florham campus. Focal Point is the mansion where the Vanderbilt family lived. It's used for classroom spaces now. So like I said, more of that suburban campus overall. And then I have some of my information here. I do just want to point out, I don't have a slide for our application process, but the one overall deadline that you all should tr really try to meet is our November 15th deadline. Um, if you've reached that deadline, you'll get a free application, whether it's through the Common App or through our website, you'll get a um, $1,000 grant, which gets applied for all four years if you're admitted early on. Uh, and then you'll get a decision before the December holidays. So we always encourage students to reach that November 15th deadline, have a completed application, and that would include your high school transcripts, that application itself, and then the test scores if they're required. So we have a unique test optional policy. So students who are above a 3.3 GPA in high school are not required to submit their test scores. But if you're below that 3.3, they are required. But if you have any questions about the process, you can always give me um, a shout out. Be happy to help. Thank you. All right, Dennis, thank you very much. Our last presentation of the evening is from SUNY New Paltz. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is um, Abigail. I am a freshman admission advisor at SUNY New Paltz. Uh, and um, SUNY just stands for um, State University of New York. Uh, so we um, are a New York State school um, and we are located in, in New Paltz, New York. Uh, so we um, are really proud of our location. We are smack dab in the middle of the Hudson Valley. So we are an hour and a half south of Albany, uh, which is our capital, uh, and an hour and a half north of New York City, but we're also about an hour and 40 minutes um, from North Hunterdon High School. Um, and we are so proud of our location because um, we really have a lot of opportunities for our students, um, whether they be internship opportunities, um, academic opportunities, you know, if our students wanted to participate in any research or, um, you know, go on field trips during their classroom time. Um, and then also, um, we're really proud of our location just for fun things to do in the area, you know, apple picking, pumpkin picking, um, biking, hiking, all of those cool. Uh, so we do have a lot of options for our students. Um, which is really great. Um, but also on campus, we have a lot of options for our students as well. So um, we have over 100 majors and 50 minors. Um, so this really gives our students the opportunity to kind of get that major that they're that they want to get, you know, maybe ma major in math and minor in theater arts or whatever it might be. Uh, so we do have a lot of opportunities for our students there. Um, 
And when we're looking at the application process, we are um, looking to see that a student applies either using the Common application or the SUNY application. Uh, we do not have a preference, so whichever one uh, you know a student um, prefers to apply to, especially for um, our uh, New Jersey students, a lot of them do apply uh, using the common application. Um, but if a student wanted to uh, apply using the SUNY, if they're applying to other state university of New York schools, they can use that as well. Um, after that, we are looking at the high school transcript. So when we're looking at the transcript, we're looking to see that you have um, four years of English, four years of social studies, three to four years of a science with a lab, um, three to four years of math. The math must include Algebra 2 trigonometry. Um, that is a hard set requirement set by our math department. Uh, and then two to four years of a language other than English. Um, when we're looking at the high school transcript, we are you know, looking uh, at that GPA. So uh, the average of our accepted students have between um, a 3.5 and a 4.0, um, but that isn't a set number. You know, We do take, of course, above a 3.5, but we also take a little bit under as well. So it's not a set number. Um, um, and then after that, we are looking to see your essay. Now your essay is really your time to shine. It's your time to show us who you are as a person, as a student. Um, and we love reading those personal essays, but please, please, please make sure that someone proofreads them before you send them in, just so there are no silly mistakes there. Um, after the essay, we are uh, we do require um, at least one letter of recommendation from a teacher or a guidance counselor, but we will accept up to three letters. Um, so if you want the other um, if you want the other letter to be um, from a coach or supervisor or anyone in your life, you can have those people send those in. We will gladly accept those letters of recommendation as well. Um, after that. Um, we are um, you know, looking at your extracurriculars. So this will be on your common application or your SUNY application. Um, this year, we are, not, we are not requiring SAT scores or ACT test scores. Um, that's something that we do usually require. Uh, so, um, but this year we are not just because we know that it is so hard for those students to you know, sign up for the test and take the test due to COVID. So we are test optional for spring 2021 as well as fall 2021. Um, so that's just what we're looking for in the application process. Um, so for deadlines, we are, uh, you know, looking at um, either early action or just regular consideration. So for early action admission, um, it is non-binding. It just means that you get your application materials to us by November 15th then we guarantee you a decision by January 1st, but you have all the way until May 1st to pay your pre-enrollment deposit and let us know that you're coming. Um, so this is really designed um, to give the students a peace of mind. You know, you get that, that admissions decision a little bit earlier, uh, and then you can kind of weigh your options, maybe take a tour of New Paltz, um, or may, maybe reach out to myself or one of my colleagues if you have any questions, um, and kind of weigh your options. Um, but we do have regular consideration, and regular consideration, um, it is rolling admissions, so we do take applications all the way until May 1st. So you have all the way until from tonight or tomorrow morning until May 1st to send in your application to SUNY New Paltz and all of your application materials uh, to receive that admissions decision for uh, fall of 2021. Um, so we do have all of those options um, and just as a couple of different options for you know fun things to do on campus as well we have over 200 clubs and organizations uh, so we do have clubs for everything you know clubs for fun clubs for uh, philanthropy clubs for all of our majors um, as well as you know our cultural clubs as well so we have a lot of things going on on campus and around campus too if you have any questions, please feel free to go to the New Paltz website. Uh, it's newpaltz.edu, uh, and there is a bunch of stuff there, so I highly recommend checking out our website and our virtual events that we're offering. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to everyone for joining us. When you close the window after this uh, session, there'll be a link to a very quick four-question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. It's also one of many sessions you can sign up for through the website that you signed up for this. 
And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings through the North Huntington website. Again, thank you to our presenters for presenting tonight. Thank you for attending. Have a great evening.